podcast, Truth Seekers podcast. Buckle up, everyone. We're going to talk aliens, UFOs, ghosts, spiritual and paranormal from all of the three moons. Beyond your wildest dreams. Pod- Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. and gentlemen how's it going i'm your host truth seeker this is the truth seeker podcast excited delighted to be with you guys again today we got an awesome show planned as always all of these shows are awesome this is the best podcast out there you guys made it that it's good stuff thank you guys for co-creating with me uh helping me be able to bring these discussions and these topics and subjects to the table uh without your help just doesn't exist. So thank you guys for being the enablers. Thank you to um, everybody who's been supporting my work in any shape, form, or fashion. And there's many different ways to support. And thank you guys just for standing behind me. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who supports my work via Patreon. Um, if you want to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker. And uh, probably within the last week or so, we got a couple new patrons. I'm going to give you a quick shout out, guys. So shout out to David Wong, shout out to you, Um, Ryan, and Dale Rake. Thank you guys for believing in the work, coming on and partnering with me via Patreon. Again, patreon.com backslash truthseeker. There you get access to my entire discography of work. There's levels where you get our um, all the meditations that I've brought out, Um, (coughs) our Thursday night School of the Mystics, Sunday morning seer class, a bunch of stuff that we have available um, for the community aspect to what we're building there. So that enables me to move forward, keep bringing awesome podcasts and be able to bring other materials out as well. We've got a bunch of stuff coming down the pipeline. Right now I'm trying to finish this book right now and I'm almost done. Been up uh, this morning um, kind of hashing out some of the final stuff that I know that I wanted to, to get in there been writing on crystals and crystal energy and uh, where they where that stuff's at in the Bible and uh, different uh, magical wands and staffs and things like that. Um, really, really interesting stuff that I made sure that I wanted to get in there. So hashing that out this morning and I'm pretty much done with it and uh, just got my cover back. We got the cover back from the artist and it's it's beautiful. He did an amazing job um, on the cover. So I'm excited about that. I'll let you guys see it. Um, also too, just a quick update, man. Uh, we had our Christ consciousness conference this past, uh, weekend and it was amazing. We had a great time, Uh small group of people showed up, but they showed up and showed out. We had a great time, uh, getting into some teachings and, um, some lectures. Shout out to Joshua Fluman who came into town and he shared, he did an amazing job teaching on dream interpretation and symbolism. Um, shout out to 
uh, Justin Caldwell, who played the piano pretty much the entire time. And uh, it was just beautiful. It's him as a psalmist and just playing the, the piano before the Lord. It was beautiful. And uh, let's see. Yeah, shout out to everybody who showed up. And Christy Folk, shout out to you. She drove like a really long ways to be there. And everybody who made that event a, a success. Uh, King David was there filming and taking pictures. So we're going to have all that stuff coming out here shortly. So hopefully we can have the video and all that cool stuff available soon. So, yep. Thank you guys for all the support. It means the world. So, uh, again, patreon.com backslash true seeker. We're going to go ahead and jump into today's discussion. Today, I'm speaking with Dawn Barlow uh, about her new book, From Light to Dark. And um, so, her work came across my email from a friend of mine, a mutual friend and of mine and family member of hers, which is Christopher Barlow, which is the hip hop artist, Polar the White, who raps with uh, Diesel Automatic. So he said, I believe, uh, Dawn, you are Christopher's aunt. Is that correct? I am. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Now, he, he He's a really good guy. Really appreciate yeah, the work he that he's doing too so yeah you i mean your whole family man you guys are, are just bringing light and love to the earth so that's awesome trying <laughs> well welcome to the truth seeker podcast how are you today good thank you for having me awesome thank so you. um this is a subject you know we've covered so many times uh as far as people being able to hear from spirit seeing the spirit and but just like we, we've covered this subject many times but everybody has something beautiful and peculiar to bring to the table about different insights and how to hear how to see how to feel in the spirit and then how to embrace spirituality to come out of the darkness and into the light and so yes. your story is, is is essentially that um let's just kind of give a just i guess a start off just kind of give giving people a little bit of a background about who you are and what you bring to the table well, my book is actually called From Dark to Light, A Memoir of Spiritual Awakening. And um, <clears throat> in this book, I show you um, how I was born into an alcoholic abusive family and all the tragedies that happened throughout my life, all the spiritual things that happened during these tragedies or just during life where um, spirit was trying to like make me aware and I ignored them because after I went from this um, alcoholic abusive father who made us all very dysfunctional, I went into my own alcoholism and my own addictions. And I honestly did not realize I was a medium until after the tragedy of my brother who committed suicide. And that's by me going to a medium to try to connect to my brother that she said to me, do you know that you have the gift of mediumship? The spirit world is saying, would you like to open up to that? And for, I said, yes. And from that moment, spirit just came flooding in. It was just like a huge, huge revelation. I mean, I heard disembodied voices like throughout my life. I've seen spirit, things that happen, but till that moment, you know, and then after I opened up, it was incredible. Angels started coming to me. Uh, and it went from angels to saints and, and Jesus and Mother Mary. And I mean, that's how I started. I didn't start connecting to loved ones and giving readings. I started talking to them from the biblical days and, and, and my guides and stuff. And then it ended up where I ended up just started giving people readings and practicing. And I just kept getting better and better. And that's how I developed my mediumship. And I, I end up on a daily basis, I meditate and I communicate and I write down. And that's a lot of this in this book is communication from them. And I still do it because I'm doing, I'm getting the information for my next book now. I'm doing what they want. This, uh, they told me to write this book. They told me to write the information. This wasn't my idea. This really wasn't. I, I was told just what to do. And then they told me, uh, they, they, they actually gave me the cover for the book. They showed me the vision of this book, of what they wanted on it. Like from top to bottom, this book is this, you know, it's to spread with the world. And this book is also like, if you're having a difficult day, you can go to this book and flip through it. You can find something enlightening to lift you up from say Mother Mary or, or, or anyone. You know, that's basically what this book is. That's interesting because we've been hearing a lot about that lately. A lot of people 
who are writing books. As, you know, I'm writing. I'm in the middle of writing mine right now, yeah. but I, I've been doing my research about uh, you know different publishers and things like that who promote spiritual books. And most yes. of the interviews and things that I'm listening to, they're all saying that this was something that um, was channeled by the angels or from, you know, the Christians would say, God told me to write this book or the Holy Spirit put it on my heart. I mean, even the Bible is inspired by God. So it's like the divine, there's people channeling the divine talking about their experiences and then having these keynotes that are like from the other side. Right. And so it's just being open and honest about the information that's coming through. The interesting thing is, is like a lot of times, like, there may not even seem like any validation for these concepts, but they're just channeled through you. You automatically know them and it comes in the form of automatic writing or automatic typing. And then you go back and read it. I mean, I'm reading my stuff that's coming. I'm like, I don't even remember writing this stuff. I didn't know that I knew this stuff because I'm, I'm, like, I'm having to relearn things that I wrote, which is a very interesting practice. So that's it's really awesome that you say that. One question I did have for you um, when you went to that medium and she said she she identified that gifting within you and said that you was a medium as well. Yes. W- was there was there like some type of impartation or did when she say it, did something unlock in you? Did she no, pray I, for you? Did she tell you, like, go home and meditate and ask to speak with Mary? Like, how did that transpire? Well, from no, that this is what medium? happened. She's like, there are spirits standing here and they want you to try to see them and uh, tell me about them. And that's how it happened. And there was a woman named Grace with blonde hair. And she said, yes, she's here. I said, yes, she is. And I gave her the message that the lady said. And that was the first time I actually really had a communication back and forth with spirit instead of opposed to just hearing them or just seeing them, my own personal communication. And that's when I went, she said, you need to go home. And every day you need to try to connect to spirit in some way. And basically it was angels at first that kept coming in. They're the ones who told me to write the book. So how, how how do they come in? I know there's, I mean, there's okay. tons of ways to connect, right? So how, I mean, how, how, what's I have, your favorite way? I have the gift of sight. I can see who comes in. I can describe them. I can see their hair color, their right color, what they're wearing, everything. And then um, as I communicate, it's through mind-to-mind communication. And I also receive feelings from spirit. They can make me feel sad. Somebody who's committed to a su- suicide can make me feel overwhelmed with yeah. desperation. It's so I get all those senses and that's how I communicate to spirit. Yeah. So what about through, you know, like you were talking about uh, spending time in meditation or is there some more intense contact that comes through that? Is it a little bit more clear or is it It focused? is because I, what I do, it's called sitting in the power and you take your energy and you just pull it up from your feet and you pull it up through your body and you pull it up to the top of your head and you pretty much just let it sit there. And that is practice. Because you raising your energy up, the spirit world is, they're dropping their energy. And that's how you're meeting. You're meeting halfway in between as you raise it. So it's a practice of sitting there and raising the energy above your head. And then, and you will connect that way. Uh, also, you talked about, you know, having all of these um, tragedies and just, you know, going through a really dark time. Yeah. But you said the whole time spirit was trying to you know, get a hold of you and try to send you messages. Did you know it while you were going through it? Or was it a hindsight thing that now that you can look back, you can see how things were strategically happening over your life? Well, um, some of it was hindsight and some of it I didn't realize. Some of it, like when I was a child, there was a couple in my house that were in spirit. And um, through two mediums, we found out it was a murder-suicide. But they would frighten me to death. They would whisper my name, and, you know, so disembodied voice, like they frightened me, those things. But um, actually, when I was um, in my addiction, I really had a hard time getting clean. And I struggled and I would stay clean and I would drink and I would stay. And I got pregnant with my first child. And I still had a difficult time try, staying off of alcohol. So, I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I was like seven months pregnant and I still had a drink, unfortunately. I mean, I wasn't drinking every day, but it was a drink, you know? And um, I was on my way to my baby shower. And uh, as the girls were picking me up, I stepped in a hole in the road, snapped my right ankle, 
fell on the left, snapped the left ankle, oh, wow. broke, broke him severely. I was out of commission and that got me sober because I needed surgery. I was in a bed until I delivered that child. And that I believe, and I always felt that was like um, an intervention from God. And if you don't mind, I'm going to read from you exactly a message that I got about that. For sure. On May 27th in 2017, as I connected to the angelic realm today, I was shown a vision of a group of angels wearing all white. Suddenly, all these angels started to change into what looked like ornaments. Next, I was shown a Christmas tree that I was kneeling in front of when I was a child in my living room while my father was sitting on the couch looking very angry. An angel came forth and he told me is, he is Nathaniel, one of my guardian angels. He told me that he has been with me since birth and he has always protected me from the physical harm from my father. He told me that he would continue to be with me till I transition home again. He said, I will always protect you from physical harm. Then Nathaniel showed me myself when I was pregnant and I fell in the road in which I broke both my ankles. He showed me that he gave me a push on my back so that I would fall. He went on to say that this was asked of him from our Heavenly Father in order to change the path that I was on with my alcoholism. He said it had to be done to secure the future of my unborn son and myself. He said you had gone too far off the path and you needed to be brought back in. Otherwise, the dynamics of your life's purpose would have changed and you would never be at the place you are in your mission today. Your life's purpose is too important to just let you go a school. Contracts were signed and promises were made that we had to uphold you to. You were right in your intuition when you said that God had a hand in it, though you didn't realize the importance of it all. So that was confirmation for me right there that God, it was God's will. Wow. That was the only way they were pulling me back in. Wow. Um, I mean, I've been studying, especially from a biblical standpoint, like how God uses tra tragedy to, to um, how you say, punish us. Like it's kind of weird because punishing is like a bad word now. Yeah. You know, we're not supposed to punish our kids or chastise our kids. But the scripture says that God chastises those which he loves, right? And so there's there's things that we can get into that have deep consequences. And those consequences yep. essentially are, is God, look, I'm giving you a choice to choose, you know, you want that or you want this. Yes. And so when when whenever we're going through that stuff, again, like you said, it was hindsight. When we're going through it, we don't, you know, we we don't think that it's something that's good for us or whatever the case right. is. We want to immediately, you know, be out of that situation and just be in another season or whatever the case is. But as we look at Definitely. it, we can see the hand of the divine just guiding us. Do you think that that's something that happens for everybody or maybe a select chosen few or, or is everybody kind of being drawn at some point in their life to the divine and to God and things like that? Well, I think everybody is drawn. I don't think one soul is better than another. I think everyone has a different purpose and maybe some purposes are more important than another that they need, they, they need to like inter, tw intervene to get it done. They need to get that done. So they have to intervene. So I don't know if they'll intervene in everyone's life purpose, but they do, you know, in some way they do. It, it, it depends on the importance I feel of what the life purpose is. Yeah. And if I can get this book out and this book helps a lot of people, then there's the purpose. Yeah, definitely. Um, would you think so? So people are, are, you know, would hear that and they, you know, some people <laughs> we talk about this all the time. Some people have hundreds of experiences with the angelic, with the demonic, with UFOs, just anything that's otherworldly. It's like a, it's a, it's an everyday uh, encounter for them, but then some people go their entire life without having anything like that happen. Or maybe they do and they just don't perceive it or they don't believe it or whatever yeah. the case some is. Some people just aren't open to it. Yeah. What about the people who want to have it, right? So like if there's a desire within someone to connect with their guardian angels, if somebody wants to connect with Jesus, um, can, can they do it? Like just simply going off of that inner desire, can anybody do it? I think with an intention is everything. And I think everyone comes to earth with that ability because not one soul is better than another. You just have to have the intention and you have to go within and learn 
And if you really have that desire, they will connect with you. They will. They don't, they don't you know, shove anyone aside. I'm not it. better than anyone else. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I believe it too. Um, what about, let me ask you about this. So when we talk about these type of spiritual experiences and I mean, we're hearing voices where our moods are changing instantly, but it's all for a reason once we're able to kind of interpret it. Um, let me just go here first. Is, speaking of the moods, when that first happened, was that strange to you? Did you think that it was, you know, your blood pressure being off or you just, you know, it could have, we, we try to explain this stuff away when we start having these weird thoughts come to us. We think we're judging people, you know, things like that. Did it come natural or was it a process of awakening for you to understand what these feelings and impressions were? Actually, I never thought too much about it. I kind of am one that just kind of went, whatever, and put it aside. You know, I just, I, I, I just didn't want to look into it, to tell you the truth. I didn't understand why they happened and I didn't question. I was too busy in my life, not looking elsewhere except, okay, whatever, and just move on. You know, the only thing was would frighten me was a child when they would whisper my name and stuff. That would frighten me. But otherwise, I didn't pay much attention. There was a time in my alcoholism um, I went on a three day Coke binge. And by the third day, I was like, I, I had to get some sleep. So I was at a friend's house and I laid down. And at the end of the bed stood a man, a woman and a child. And I started talking to them and they kept looking at me like, I can't believe you can see me. And always thought that was a hallucination. But in the back of my mind thought there was something more to that. But there was, they were in Victorian clothing they weren't a hallucination. They were apparitions. And my mind where I was, was in a perfect place to see them. You know, I mean, I'm not saying you have to do a three day Coke binge to see spirit. I'm just saying that happened to me. So, you know, and then I just put it aside though. Yeah. There's a lot of people who have had experiences like that, whether it's, you know, drugs opening up portals to the other side yeah. and, and the, you know, doing drugs and seeing things that aren't there or really seeing things that are there, you right. know, opening up the right. portal and able to see demons yes. and things like that, especially like if you're doing, let's just, let's just be honest. Like most people who are doing like hardcore drugs like that, they're not, you know, they're, they're really doing things in their life that are of the lower vibrational frequency. You're dealing right. with, you know, gang activity, you're, you know, you know, people bringing illegal drugs into the country. There's all right. types of crazy stuff that goes on. People stealing yeah. drugs or stealing to get drugs. So when you're doing that stuff and then you're able to tap into the spirit realm and you're able to have these, these encounters, but they're usually not the best, right? I found that like when you, when you start doing the beautiful things in life, when you start living your life at a higher vibrational frequency, helping people doing alms before God, as the scriptures yeah. would call it, then you're, when, once you tap in through meditation or maybe even sacred plant medicines, you're able to contact and have encounters with higher vibrational beings that have your best interest in mind. Definitely. Almost definitely. The lower vibration is... It's, I believe in karma. So the lower vibration is just going to bring you what you're putting out is what you're going to get back in there. Exactly. So you're putting out higher vibration. That's coming right back to you yep. also. Yep. So, it's know? exactly like I was talking about how, <clears throat> you know, the, the punishment of God. Like, we can look at it as the punishment. It's the punishment of the universe. Essentially, you're, get, you're getting back what, what you're putting out there. Right. Again, and if it's you're basically, stealing, if I you're doing things, all this bad stuff, you're going to reap, reap the harvest of that. right? Definitely. But things that you go through tragedies, I think they're lessons that you need okay. to learn or, or to, I, I was told that everything I've been through, cause I've been through some stuff is to bring, so I could have empathy for people yeah. that were in my shoes and I can help them better. That's, that's yeah. an interesting thing to look at too, because it's not all your fault, right? Sometimes like if we're doing bad stuff, then the, the repercussions that we suffer thereof, it's usually our fault, but there's some things we go through that are, we're just kind of like a victim to the circumstance and tragedy yes. and things like that happen that we have no use of so to think that that was something that was our fault and we brought on that that could be something that people are it's hard to understand but i, I like the fact that you look at we use everything to learn from you know what i'm saying so anything oh, that happens to us we can turn around and use it for our good the scripture says that anything that the enemy meant for your harm god will in turn use it for your your good so if we right. believe that anything that happens to us that we use it as a form of spiritual alchemy even and using it to elevate from one level to the next versus sitting right. in 
our guilt or our fears or our trauma and things like that, but really learning right. from it and healing from it. Right. Definitely. I want to ask you about this too, because, uh, and a lot of this stuff is just stuff that I'm studying different ideas or whatever, but when it comes to, um, helping spirits cross over, as you mentioned, right, there's yep. supposedly like uh, spirits who are stuck in between. It could be many different reasons. You know, we, we all have seen movies and things that depict the person who had died and didn't know that they died or they died in a traumatic way. Yeah. And they're just kind of stuck in, in that in that ether in between. And uh, and then we have ghosts and then we have evil spirits and there's different things going on on the other side. But how, how would you um, help help uh, an, an, a being, uh, uh, I guess, a disembodied person to cross over to the other other side? Is that kind of an example like they don't know that they've passed and things like that? Yeah. And I mean, and I've had a, I had a, a, a friend named Laurie who passed away suddenly. And I was in the basement of my house doing the laundry and I could feel spirit on my back, like climbing on my back, mm. like panic and anxiety. And it was so overwhelming coming into my energy that I said, and this was the day after Laurie passed. And I said, Laurie, is that you? And I, and I said, you need to cross over. And I just spoke to her and said, listen, you've been waiting to be with your father. It's okay. You're dead. It's okay. Just go to the light. And I spoke to her. And then I felt peace. Well, two months later, I go to see that medium again because she's really fabulous. And she said, there's a younger woman here named Laurie that's coming to thank you for helping her to cross over. She said, you're a good friend. So I knew that made me, gave me confirmation that, yeah, I am helping these souls cross over because when I also, when I um, was living in another house, uh, there was a fire in the house, but I'll, that's a, comes after this, but. Uh, when I moved in, I could feel this energy there and it was a male and he wasn't very nice. He was trying to frighten me. I would do, this is where I started writing my stuff in my book. This is start, where, the place where I started connecting to the angels. And he would laugh at me as I was doing it and like mock me and thought everything was funny. And, you know, and, and I told him, listen, you can cross over. I will help you. And he didn't want to, he wanted no part of that. So, um, <clears throat> it goes by maybe, I lived there maybe a total of eight months. Okay, so about seven and a half months into living there, he comes to me and says to me, my name is Peter. I'm afraid God won't forgive me for what I've done. And I said, yes, he will. And I called in Archangel Michael and other angels came in and they helped him to cross over. And it was like, peace. Well, two weeks later, there was a fire at my house and the house burnt down to the ground. And that's why he came to me because they have the foresight of that. And he would have been in chaos, not knowing where to go. So that is the reason he stepped in. But no matter what the reason is, I feel I went to that place purposely just to cross that soul over. Now, were you ever given any insight about maybe roles or different duties and stuff that happens on the other side? As far as people who haven't ascended, maybe because, you know, the more study I'm doing, I'm finding that like it almost seems that those who have kind of passed all the tests and things that they were supposed to take on Earth and they've reached that level of ascension. I, I feel like on the other side that they can be used as teachers uh, to maybe their, you know, what I'm saying ancestral lineage and, and reaching out to, to those below them. Um, you know, even like in Eastern thought, they always the, you know, the teacher or the guru when he crossed over would, right. would continue to teach the pupil from the other side. Oh, and then those who were kind of maybe out of balance or out of whack, maybe they would have to do something else, whether it's people believe in reincarnation to come back and kind of take those tests over. Would you ever shown anything like that? Yes, I've been told that people who leave too early before their time and don't fulfill their purpose will have to come back to live another life to fill that purpose. Because regardless what, that purpose has to be filled. Now, I, my brother who committed suicide, I was told about him that he had to walk that path of despair. He had to feel what it was like to reduce him to suicide because now he is working over there helping souls who come over from suicide. So I think everyone has their own purpose. And I think 
there's so much with drug addiction. And I think there are too many souls that are leaving early due to this drugs. Yes. And they're not supposed to leave early. Definitely. But Definitely. they are going to have to come back and live another life. So it's better to go through everything you have to while you're here and, and step up to the plate. So when you go over, you're okay. Instead of having to, I mean, you can be reincarnated. I think you can choose to, but you have to, if you don't fulfill your purpose. And that's what I've been told. And yes, like you said, like, like say uh, gurus and stuff, they come, they go over and they do, they continue their work from the other side with helping souls there and here. Yeah. Definitely. Not, so. all souls there, not all souls there are uh, healthy. They need, they go there, they need healing. Yeah. We see that through the scriptures too. And there's a lot of people, even in the, in the Christian realm who are getting into some of this, because like we see the picture of Jesus going up on the top of Mount Tr uh, Transfiguration. And while he was up there, he brought Peter, James and John with him. And he goes up there to pray and meditate. And then his appearance changes. He turns into his light being form. And right. essentially um, Moses and Elijah show up and they're speaking with them, you know, and, and they got yes. to kind of see what Jesus was doing during right. his long hours of prayer and meditation. He's meeting right. with what the scripture says in Hebrews is the great cloud of witnesses that are just watching right. over and guiding and guiding us. And, you know, what I'm saying rooting us on from the other side. So right. what about your experiences working with the saints and things like that? Mother Mary and Jesus and stuff. What about your experiences with that? Oh, uh, that's been incredible. You know, ever since I was born, I, I, it was like an automatic. I've always felt Mother Mary with me since the day, since the day I can remember. She's always been with me. I've always had faith and believe she was there. And um, when I was like, a, I don't know, 18 or something, I know I'm, I was raised Catholic, though I don't practice the Catholic religion now, but um, I was doing like a novena to Mother Mary and asking her for money. And in the Catholic religion, you're not supposed to ask for money, but I did anyway. <laughs> so this novena is a nine days. On the eighth day, you're supposed to receive what you want. So on the eighth day, that night I had a dream. And in the dream, I was walking up the street that I grew up on and then in the, each hand was a statue of Mother Mary. And on the bottom of that statue was three numbers. When I woke up and I didn't really, you know, this is the point, you know, I didn't know I was a medium or anything. I realized I had to play those numbers and I played those numbers and I won. And that's, I got my money. Wow. That's interesting. That, I've never heard of that term. I'm looking yeah, it up now. That's very, That very was a confirmation for me. I was like, wow, Mother Mary, I knew you were there, but I know you're really there. I'm, uh, I'm re re reading this now on Google. It says, during a novena, the devotees make petitions, implore favors, or obtain graces by worshiping Jesus Christ and asking for intercessions of the Virgin Mary or yeah. the uh, saints of the faith. In the Catholic tradition, much used uh, novena prayers include doctrinal statements in addition to a personal petition. This is interesting yeah. because Christians are practicing this every Sunday or every day and don't even know it, right? Yeah. That's right. Well, this was a time of kind of like you said, to kind of separate yourself and maybe fast and things like that and really focus on it. Is that something that would what you would do or? To, excuse me? Uh, when it, when you would practice one of these, you said you there was a, like an eight day period. I didn't, I didn't do them on. No, there was no fasting and okay. I didn't do them on a regular basis. It was it was like, I mean, I just kind of was, this is just before I went to my own alcoholism. Do you know what I mean? So everything was thrown out the window for me. It was just, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was yeah. just, I just, things happened here and there. Things were sporadic for me here and there through my life, yeah. you know? So, and it just came together after my, I think my brother's suicide, it, I was severely depressed over that. And I think that, tra I even thought of committing suicide myself. I, I just couldn't take it. And I think that itself is brought me to this where I am now. All that pain and hurt. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I always talk about how, like, I'm able to look back at those dark times, the, the you know, the tragedies and just the yep. trauma and and, you know, demonic possession and things like that. Like I have yep. a different relationship with those beings now. Right. right. I'm thankful for their influence in oh, my yeah. life to chastise yes. me and warn me and yep. teach me and say hey if you stay if you keep doing that we have direct access to you if you that's stay right. in that lifestyle right. you're over here with, you know so my right. relationship with them is it, changed because of my relationship with god i'm able to kind of step back and see 
almost God just like moving like a chess pieces. Okay, you got to do a little time over here just so that you have that gratitude. You have a natural empathy to help those people who are still in that. You know, you have this natural burden for those who are dealing with alcohol addiction. You don't have to act right. like you care for them like you really do. You that's really right. want to help those people. Right. So yeah. that's that's the beautiful thing from we're able to learn from all of those experiences. Um, yeah. So with, you know, the, the working with different spirits and, and things like that and the saints, have you ever had an apparition, which I know you mentioned apparition, but have you ever seen it physically? Was that something that happened where maybe a being was in the room or a shadow or something like that? Well, what I, I see, I can see Jesus come in. I can see Mother Mary. I can see the saints. I can see the archangels. But it's almost like a movie in your head is what it is. It, it, they come like that, you know. So, But in some of them, like they started coming in and how I would know them as a statue. So I would know who they were. So I could recognize them. Yeah. I have apostles come in. I have, you know, it, there's, there's a never ending list of who comes in. You know? um, we have a, a question here from the chat. Christy Folks wants to know, do you believe in ascended masters? Definitely. I believe Jesus is an ascended master. Definitely. Yep. He ascended yep, and, and they the called death. him master. <laughs> He's an ascended That's right. master. That's right. Yeah. They were masters on earth and they ascended and they're masters in heaven. Now, um, you know, speaking again of, you know, all these beautiful encounters and angels and spirits and things like that. Have you have you ever had any demonic encounters or like you said, I know you've you've dealt with some of these souls that were kind of mean or tricksters or things like that. Have you, have you ever had any encounters with never. anything demonic? I've never had demonic. I've only had the mischievous where they come into my energy or, you know, I had um, one of them wake me up and like whisper in my ear you know and wake up and there they run away like little toddlers you know what i mean like children uh just like to play around but never demonic because i am surrounded by angels constantly because i work with the angels so i'm always surrounded in light just before i came on the air today an angel that was illuminating in pink came in and said the light of god shines upon you they wanted me to know that before i started this podcast it's shining on me during this podcast That's is what awesome. they're telling me. So um, an another interesting concept I like to explore is like, what do they sound like? Right. Or, or, or you know, I, I, I know you have the gift of, of uh, second sight, so you're able to kind of see them as well. But for the voices and stuff, do you all do you interpret them all the same? Like or do they have different inflections and different tones when they're speaking? How does that how does one it, in, in, it's interpret It's not that? different inflections or tones because it's thoughts, but it's different feelings of energy. They you, they come in with you can be overwhelmed by, um, say, um, an archangel because when they come in, they come in, they're like they're 12 feet tall, you know, and it's just the energy is powerful. Or, or Mother Mary, it's the, the energy's all different. You can just feel it. I, I'm good at feeling energy. I, I, and I, through that energy, I can feel their personalities of anyone who comes through. But so never, not, but, but you've never experienced anything demonic or never. No. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, I, awesome. I, I don't think I ever will because I I'm surrounded by angels too much. I work with Jesus and Mary. So, mm -mm. That's not allowed near me. <laughs> what, so, uh, so you're talking about being able to f sense what they feel like. How, how does Jesus feel when he comes into the room? He feels like an old friend. He just feels warm and inviting like an old friend. And, you know, I don't get overwhelmed because, and I asked that, why do I not get overwhelmed? And they said, because you need to be at an even keel to do this work. So they don't come in overwhelming me. Wow. That's funny you say that. Um, I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, um, <laughs> early on when, after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit years ago, um, I would be reading the Bible and I would be reading across a passage and then the Holy Spirit would just overtake me and I'd feel the euphoria and the bliss that would just come into the room just by me reading my Bible and I'd just get caught up in it and just start crying and just start praising yeah. God, right? Yeah. And um, and I would I, I told the guy who was discipling me, I was like, yeah, I just I felt the Holy Spirit came upon me. And I'm like bragging. Yep. He's like, well, what do you want to show you? He's like, you probably, 
you know, you need to pay attention to what you were reading in the scriptures because he <laughs> wanted you to show something, but you're so caught yeah. up in the euphoria <laughs> yes, of yes. it that you can't, you, you're not, you're not really receiving a message. And that's something right. too, that like when we have these encounters with the divine, um, I think a lot of people, even in America, we get spoiled with it, right? When they're really trying to show us a message or, or have us to, uh, you know, let go of some things or really be changed. So I like to really focus on, even though I'm into all of these encounters, I want to know more about them and, and things like that. It's like the ones that really define you and change the way that you act. And I mean, I've right. had encounters with Christ and in the spirit to where like, just in my own devotional time to where days later, if anything, anybody mentions anything spiritual or Jesus, I just start weeping and I'm like, vibrating for days you know three days later yeah. because the yeah. encounter was so was so beautiful and it, it changed me to my core so those are the ones I like to focus on man versus yeah. just like oh you're just because it becomes nonchalant and you never want it to be that you know right. you always want to be in a, a place of reverence and respect you oh know? definitely yeah you know not just um I have celebrities come to me oh yeah and uh I when that Neverland Ranch documentary came out I didn't watch it. I heard all the hubbub here and there about it. I didn't pay much attention, but I've always been a fan of Michael's, but uh, he, he started coming to me. I never called for him. He came in and he gave me his side of the story. And um, I got a whole chapter in my book on it, on the, what he has to say about this. Yeah, that's, and, that, that's interesting. I actually watched the, <laughs> it's funny you say that, an interview with Tito Jackson yesterday, giving his take okay. on the whole thing. All right. I was surprised at what Michael had to say, but uh, it's whatever. It's, you know, yeah, he had to uh, say his truth, he said, and he had to do that so he could heal and move forward. Mm -hmm. What So um, what about as far as like, what's the difference between mediumship and channeling? Now, is it like you get the message and then just relay it? Because some yeah. people, as far as like channeling goes, they will kind of like, move aside and then let the spirit just kind of speak right. through them there you know what i'm saying their mannerisms yeah. change and yes. i'm speaking to you as adolf yeah, hitler yeah. or something you Ch know what I'm saying? Ch yeah channeling is letting the spirit into you and speaking through you which mm. i've never done i've always had a little fear of that i don't yeah. know why but i had i have a friend who does it but i i've always had this little fear so i pretty much just do the mediumship where i relay the message yeah you know maybe one day i'll have that courage to do it but I, I, I don't know what it is. I, when they come too close into my energy, they give me anxiety and panic attacks. They, they've got to stay. I, I, I'm willing to take your message. Just stay at a distance, you know? Mm -hmm. And you can create those rules, right? You can just let them oh, know, look, definitely. I'm not cool with that. You're invading my personal space. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And if they're, you just say, go away, you can go away. Or I'm trying to sleep now, everybody, please leave my room. And, and they listen. You know, they do listen. Just like my guides, I have guides. I have um, Agnes, who is a elderly nun on my left, and I have Joseph on my right. And I say, okay, now I'm going to do a, a reading. Uh, could the mother's family come in on the left side of them and uh, the father's on the right side of them, please? So I know who's coming in. So they all do, you know, you just got to speak up. They listen. Now, really you, you, you finding your, your own healing on, on this personal path of journey and then, you know, using mediumship to kind of get you to where you are. And now you're helping other people. Like, what are some of the examples of like p someone who's going through a reading and stuff? Do they do people get emotional? Do they find closure? Do they maybe kick drug addiction? What are some of the benefits of doing something like this for other people? Um, there is. Um quite a bit of healing for the person who comes in to get a reading, but not just for the person sitting in front of me, for the soul who's coming forward in spirit. It, it helps both worlds. And yes, it's, it's healing. It's um, finding out information. It's um, people come forward, with, um, come in with a reading with guilt. Like, I don't feel like I did enough for you. And, and they leave and they, it's just, they feel so much better. They feel lighter, you know, it helps them in their lives. You know, and it's not just, like I said, it's to help both worlds. It's not just for Earth. It's souls, both souls. Now, now, what about, I know this is kind of a different subject, but it's still deal dealing with the spirit realm. Now, what about like any other type of spirits as far as maybe like fairies or gnomes or nature spirits or, 
UFOs or anything like that? Have you ever had any of those other encounters? Well, not not UFOs, but I have had um, I had this man come forward to me actually, and uh, he says he calls he said he's Merlin, Merlin the magician. Like I have people, I had fairies come forward. I I mean all these um, Triton, King of the Sea. I mean, all, I never to me these are fables, but they come forward and they say no, we're not. And I've got in my book, like what, what Triton says about um, the healing properties of the sea. And, you know, they all give me a message, the ones who come forward. So, and it's to help the world. So, yeah. Oh yeah. I've, uh, there was many. Yeah. We've talked, we've talked to people. <laughs> we've talked to people who have uh, talked about the different angels that are kind of over the different elements. Like you said, the sea, the different beings that are over the sea, cleansing yes, the sea, yes. um, you know, even those who are over fire, which is very interesting, uh, the air, things like that, which is really cool. The you know the the plant kingdom, even There's so much right. study when it goes into yeah. that oh. and the different levels of angels and entities that are, you know, concerning that. Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. It, it, it's incredible. I I you know I mean I learned a lot with everyone coming in because I never believed that Merlin was real or. Uh, even fairies, you know, or any of these Triton or any of that. Now, what I about didn't. what about the dream state? Do you find that the angels and the other side communicate with people in their dreams? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, they, um, I believe that your loved ones connect to you in dreams and they can visit you and give you a message and they're really there. And they definitely, um, angels, Mother Mary, any, they can come in and and I think they give you information uh, subconsciously. Sometimes you wake up and sometimes you're like, oh, how do I know this? Or, you know, or you think it's your intuition, but you were told it in the night through your subconscious. So, oh, they definitely do. Yeah. yeah. yeah That's yeah. a big way because a lot of people are open in that state, especially the ones who, who are really push against it. So that's how they get to them. Yeah. I find that, you know, the um, the dream state and then, like you said, the, the state of subconscious. When you're doing something that doesn't require much brain activity. Right. And I say driving. My, many people don't, you know, if you're driving a familiar commute that you drive every day, like that drive, um, man, there's so much that is that, that, that you're able to receive in those states. Right. And uh, yes. driving, using the restroom, cutting the grass, <laughs> being on, right, you know, right. taking a jog yes. or shower. You're able to kind of receive more than something that you're doing that takes a lot of brain activity. Well, I've been told that they fine tune my hearing for the spirit world, my vision, everything while I'm sleeping. They change it. They put it up levels. You know, they they do everything while you're sleeping. There's a lot they can do. Now, has has any of it been for you just a little bit too overwhelming? Like, have you like been so sensitive that like you need to turn it off or you need to ground yourself or anything like that? With not connecting to spirit, but if they work with me a lot in, in fine tuning things, I'm exhausted for days. You know, they, they, they just take the energy right out of me, but it comes back. You know, it, I guess it has to be done. So, yeah, everything's about change. Yeah. 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 Now, what does it do for you when you give somebody a, a, a reading? Because I, I find that like doing the lord's work um you you receive just as much healing and you know ministry as well by being one who's able to facilitate the energy or be a, a clear channel like you receive healing by just helping those right do you, do you Defin feel that oh, as well? oh yes definitely because every time i give someone a reading and they walk out that door i know i just help them and the world of spirit and that is my job because I feel that is my purpose on earth to work for the Lord. That's what I do. And, you know, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. If I don't connect to spirit on a daily basis, I feel off. There's something wrong. I have to have that connection. Yeah. I have to communicate with them. No, I, I agree just, with you on that. My soul feels that way. Yep. Seven days without tapping into the spirit connecting makes one week. Uh, yep. Pun. That's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we got another question here from chat. Um, they want to know, do you uh, experience the ringing in the ears, as some people say, like that vibrational tone that a lot of people hear? And uh, a, a lot of people believe it, it, it is concerning angelic contact or even if you meditate 
and focus upon that tone. You know, when we, I, I just the, the Christ consciousness uh, event that we did, I spoke about the healing power of tones and frequencies and stuff yes. like that. And tones have the ability to heal you and cleanse you and different things like that. But then some people hear this resonant tone when they get quiet and everything's silent. It's almost crippling if you get real silent. And it's like, but I've heard if you focus on that, you can time travel, leave your body. Some people believe it's the angelic realm trying to get your attention to communicate or focus. Have, do you know anything about that? Well, when I connect to spirit, all, actually, all I have to do is think of spirit. And I get the noise I get is like, um, like the snow on a TV but very fluffy and light. And all I have to do is think of spirit and, or if I try, I purposely connect, that's what comes in. But I do get that really high once in a while. And I got it just before we started the podcast. Wow. So yeah, that is definitely spirit saying I'm around the angels, anyone I'm around and, I, and we're ready to communicate or do what you need to do to help you. Um, Melody wants to know, do you use crystals? Um, I don't know much about crystals. I do have some crystals, but I do believe in them. But I, I, that's something I really need to like, you know, learn about. For sure. Yeah. Um, I, that's what I was writing about this morning and it's the crystal energy and being able to uh, change your vibration and being able to lift you to a higher frequency. Oh, definitely. Crystal, crystals hold in energy and, and frequencies within them and the different ones do different things. And, uh, right. I was really relating it back to in the, in the scriptures where you had the uh, the priest who had the, the ephod with the 12 crystals or jewels in them that yeah. essentially got them ready to talk to Yahweh, got them ready to talk to God by changing right. their vibrational frequency. So crystals yeah. are beautiful. So, yeah. Oh, they're beautiful. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Do you have it's any? Just... So you said you're already writing uh, for, for your next book as well, right? Yes. It's not anything. Excuse me, my kitty cat. Get down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am. And this book is told to me from spirit. It is not a book that I would have chosen to write or anything I would have ever thought. Uh, I, it, it's going to be about, uh, uh, it's a group of uh, souls coming forward, calling themselves the Wayward Angels. And they were people that were on earth and they were all celebrities that passed away. And they're some really older celebrities, people I don't even know. And they're giving me messages of things that they went through on, while they were on earth. And they are, have formed a group where they are trying that, where they are willing to help souls on earth who are going through that similar experience. And so whatever else this book is, I don't know, but this is what I just do whatever they tell me. Yeah. You know, I seen, nothing, um, I seen on yeah. your Facebook, you're using, some cards by um i think it's the angel cards by uh, yeah. doreen Do, um, yeah. doreen virtue I, you... I just do that i do that as a service to the people on facebook that's all i don't usually use them in my readings my my readings are connecting to the spirit world what do you what are your thoughts and opinions on on where she is now with her her work um are you familiar yes i i, I don't um i mean i don't have know how she can say she was a medium and everything was okay. And all of a sudden it's, it's no good. It's, it's the devil. It's, I don't believe that. I believe it's all God. And I don't know where she got that mindset from. She said she had an encounter with Jesus changed her life. Well, I speak to Jesus, but he's not telling me anything that this is the devil, you know? So I don't, don't understand it. I don't, I, know I think, I think, I think she'll come around. It's uh, I'm pretty hoping She will. I think she will. Usually. I mean, cause we, we talk about this all the time. Like, when I, I came out of some like really dark occultism and demonic summoning and stuff like that, I ended up getting demonically possessed, right? Very right. bad. And, uh, you know, learned my lesson. But when I got into church and I, I got born again, set free, I didn't want anything to do with anything that reminded me of the old life right. of the past right. life. Right. We don't know what Doreen was going through emotionally no, right. w within and, and in her finding this freedom through Christ she wants to put everything off. And so, I mean, I, I just lit some incense a while ago. It's out now. But um, 
when when I came out of w- deep dark witchcraft, I couldn't be around incense. I thought incense was used to channel spirits, and it reminded me yeah. of witchcraft stores that we used to go to, and you know. And so I was just so sensitive, and all, everything was demonic, right? Um, right. Alcohol is demonic, right? I'm sure when you come off of alcohol, you didn't want to have anything to do with it. There's people who can right. drink right. a glass of wine with a meal, and they're fine. It's not right. so. It's diff- different people are in different places, and I really feel like Doreen Virtue is kind of like that. She's just well, shunning yeah. everything and just we don't, we you know, calling it all demonic. We yeah. don't know her path or her purpose, and maybe she needs to go through this to get to somewhere else. Maybe you know this is what's going on here. You yeah, know, there's um. It's so funny. There's a, there's another guy, God bless his heart. Um, his name is Stephen Bancars, and um, uh, he's kind of similar. You know, he was um really big into the new age circles, and he was making a lot of money off of people blogging and things like that, and right. had a really good life blogging about new age articles and sharing stuff. Well, he had an encounter with Christ, and he's renounced all of that stuff, and now he's working on the other side, just kind of like demonizing anything spiritual, anything, even the Christian stuff. He's just demonizing right. that all and saying how it's new, new age. And it's interesting. He was just in the chat watching this, uh, broadcast. So it's hello to Stephen Bancards. If you're still watching, um, a lot of people send me his stuff. Um, if it's like, if he's denouncing crystals or denouncing Christ consciousness or whatever the case is, right. they'll send me his articles and stuff. Right. And he was just watching, but it's like a natural thing. You know, you're going to find people on both sides. You're going to oh, find definitely. people who come out of the occult and out of witchcraft. And they're going to do a testimonial telling you everything wrong with it, how they got hurt, how they were deceived. But we're also going to find videos and, and testimonials on YouTube where people who left the Christian church because they were abused and molested and they don't oh, yes, they see the right. holes in the Bible yep. and they're going to give you their their take. We're going to see right. there's going to be everything under the sun. You're going to have both good and the bad. It makes the world it. go around. I mean, there's all sides to everything, you mm-hmm. know, and everyone's got their path. I mean, I, whatever Doreen Rich was going through, that's her life. I don't you know, I don't think anything negatively of her or anything bad. I just hope she's happy in her life. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't feel, I know this is all the work of God. Mm-hmm. I know that a hundred percent, you know, so I just no. Yeah. I think, I think they'll come around. I think both of them will come around Stephen and, so. uh, and, and I don't well, think they'll know. come around to necessarily new age ideas, but I think that they'll, they'll right. be more inclusive by right. looking into the scriptures and Jesus will teach them the spirituality of the Bible. And it's really, well, yeah, and I well, think see, most of what we're even talking about today falls along those lines of communicating with the spirit realm, angels appearing to you in the dream state, uh, yeah. spirits appearing before you with a message. I mean, just simply the word angel doesn't necessarily mean a angelic being sent straight from heaven. The word angel simply means messenger. And these messengers right. come in many shapes and sizes and forms. They, there's oh, yeah, there's scriptures where these messengers come out of the fire, deliver a message, go back into the fire and disappear. Yep. Those right. are elemental beings, like literally. I, I was, um, I, I go down to this church in my town called St. Anne's at a shrine. And I would go down and one day I was there and there was a guy and he came over to me and said, uh, do you know where um, I could find, you know, like the priest or whatever. And so I told him and uh, next week there he is again. And he asked the same thing. And I looked at him and I said, wow, man, he looks like John the apostle, this guy, he looks so much like John the apostle. And then I, I kept getting a weird feeling about him. Week and a half later, there he is again, walks up to me and says, do you know where the groundskeeper is? And he put his hand out and he looked at me and he said, hi, my name is John. And the feeling I just knew, I knew, I, I do believe that he was someone who was sent. I don't know the reason for it, but he was sent three times to me. And the third time he introduced himself. And I knew as soon as he looked in my eyes and shook my hand that I knew him from somewhere else. And I've never seen him again. So uh, to me, that's they send people. I don't know the reasons for things, but I believe in it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I mean, the the book of Hebrews says we entertain angels unaware that we don't even know. Oh, cross definitely. Paths with these people. Yep, definitely. Um, you know, I think sometimes it, we just did an interview the other day with a guy who he talked about these angels would come here, but and they would get jobs. 
They would assume names and have yes. ID and I saw that podcast. Go yes. to work and things, you know. <laughs> but they were sent here for a message, and when the message is done, they move on to the next person and the yeah. next city. But these are angelic messengers that right. look like humans here on the earth. Oh, definitely. They, they, oh, definitely. They come right into your life to help you. They they have no problem stepping right in yeah. because they they're full of love and they want nothing but the best for you and to help you. Yep. So you know. I, one time I was driving, I mean, they, I, the guy, your guides help you, your guardian angels. I was driving to work and I was late and I was doing like 85 miles an hour. And then all of a sudden the car cut me off. And when I looked, I was in the middle lane. When I looked, there was cars on each side. I was trying to put my brakes. I was like, oh God, I don't know what to do here. I was going too fast. So my car swerved. I lost control and went towards the guardrail. So I shut my eyes because I didn't want to see myself. I said, well, this is it. <laughs> Yeah. And then all of a sudden I opened my eyes because everything was silent. My car was completely stopped without a scratch on it. Turned the wrong way in the breakdown lane. There was no one was hit. The car wasn't hit. I wasn't hit. I don't know how it stopped. I don't know how I got there. But I know later I was told in, um, somewhere in, was, I was told that they were two angels who saved my life because of my purpose on earth. So I know they come throughout your life and do things. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of videos and I, I, I have to be um, I have to question them. You know, I want to make sure they're I don't want to just like, oh, there's an angel. And it's not it's really yeah, CGI yeah. and somebody. <laughs> but there's a lot of videos online where people escape death or the, and there's a person who just like walks by and touches a car and stops it and then they disappear. Like there's some really interesting things that seem to kind oh, of yeah. point to uh, the the intervention of angels, right? And I, and yep. I, as I watch it, being a skeptic, because I want it, to, I want it to be real, but I'm a skeptic. Yep. I want it to be real, but it's like that does that looks fake. It looks like CGI, but I don't know what an angel looks like on camera appearing. I've never seen it, you know. Right. So right. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff out there. Some really interesting videos of, of very similar things like that happening. Well, of course, some of it's fake. You know, that's how people are. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure some of it's real. But if one of them's real. Right. Well, if, I, if, I'm sure some of it's real. Yeah. Oh, out, out, out of the thousands, if one of them's real. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you know. they do come. They come in angelic form where you can't see them. Or they come in human form. They, I mean, that's their job. That is their job. I mean, you have guides. Everybody has guides that stand there on a daily basis. And that's that's your intuition. They're guiding you, telling you what to do. And a lot of people go against their intuition because they're going against their guides as they're trying to guide them in their life. And they're like, why is my life so messed up? Well, because you're not listening to your guide, you know, but people need to get more in tune with that mm -hmm. so they can have a better life. You know. Now, what about synchronicity as far as like being in sync in everything, starting to line up and almost sitting like you're seeing numbers that are repeating. You're hearing phrases and terms that you've never heard before um back to back there's all of these little things that you know people are, are seeing synchronicity do you find that, that that's the way that the angels communicate as well definitely they communicate with me that way i i they communicate numbers with me big i've been getting for a long time now uh fives five 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 fives all over the place because that means changes are coming for me and i and i truly believe that's coming and um, when they're around me and like if I'm I mean, I'm human, I got days I feel down and I'm like, you know, and I get four, 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 fours. That's them like, hey, we're with you. You know, don't worry about it. We're with you. So, yeah, definitely. De oh, yeah. Most definitely. That's Even awesome. like a like a butterfly. When I see a butterfly and it's my mother trying to tell me that's what it's not her. It's yeah. like she puts a butterfly in my path to say, hey, I'm around because sometimes you feel like you need that. You feel lost, you know? Yeah, my, my wife is the same way with hummingbirds. She Every time Humming, she yeah. sees a hummingbird, she's reminded of her grandmother and right, believes that right. they're, you know, she appears yeah. in dreams as a, a hummingbird and things like yeah. that too. So That's to let you know, hey, we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm a medium, but hey, I still miss my mother and my brother, you know? I mean, I know they're okay, but I still miss them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Well... Her book is From Dark to Light, A Memoir of Spiritual Awakening. You can get that at her website. It's dawnbarlowmedium.com, correct? Yep, or amazon.com. Either way, there's the book with the big butterfly coming out of the tunnel. 
I will yep. link it in the show notes where you guys can just get it here off the page as well. So, Don Barlow, thank you for coming on the podcast. I really enjoyed this discussion. Oh, thank you so no, much, my friend. We'll have to me. do it again. When you yeah, do the sure. next book, get with me oh, and we'll yeah. talk about it. All right. All right. Nice. Have a good day. All right. Thank you, you too, everyone. my friend. Thank you so much. Bye. Don Barlow, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Awesome. Yeah. Her, her uh, nephew, I believe it is, Christopher Barlow, um, Polo the White hip-hop artist he he sent me her information and uh checked out the podcast a couple times and uh yeah so shout out to you brother thank you for setting that up it made for a really good discussion that's awesome um man just the different things that people bring to the table and i'm still learning i still have ideas that anybody who think that they have arrived any of these people we've mentioned who have it all figured out run from those people like again we've just been talking about the quote Jordan Maxwell says it all the time. Never trust the person who claims to have the truth, but always trust the person who's seeking the truth. I really believe that, man, that there's a um, there's a there's a what do you say? Someone who is pompous. They have it all figured out. They they are unteachable and they're not here to to learn. They're just here to teach. You got to be wary, man. Be wary of those people who. uh, who who have it all figured out you know um there's a weird there's a weird thing that it's a weird comfort uh to think that you do to think that everything that you believe is right that what you've experienced has led you to this and without a doubt this is the only way and to you it is because if you to you and to your mind it is if you go outside of those boundaries that you've set for yourself you're into demonic territory you're deceived or whatever. And these are the boundaries. This is part of that straight and narrow path that you are on, the part of your highway to holiness, right? And it's only, it's either this way. And if I falter a little bit to the left or to the right, then I'm done for. And people make those own boundaries within their mind. They, they make it because of their own experience. And then they couple it with the Bible and the word of God. So there's these boundaries that they have. And mind you, Each one of these people who have it all figured out, their boundaries and their beliefs and their things that they allow and the things that they believe in are all different. Those people don't agree. Again, they fight within their their own sex. I mean, there's tons of Christian videos of exposing other ministers and pointing fun at their belief systems and doctrines and theologies and stuff and letting you know why they have the complete truth, why they have it all figured out. Um, when we're, we are ever growing, we are ever seeking, ever learning, coming to the knowledge of the truth to think that we have it all figured out. I really do think that we, uh, are deceiving ourselves. And, um, so yeah, I, I really, I've kind of made it my thing. I won't learn under somebody who claims to have it all figured out. There's just something, there's an arrogance there, you know, and, and nobody's there, but to really find somebody that you're learning under or learning with who is teachable. I mean, for me, like I'm, I'm still, man, there's just so many different realms and perspectives of the spirit world and, and, and God and, uh, and you know, what the truth is concerning that matter, not like the truth, but just simply the, the truth concerning that matter. You know what I'm saying? Um, I get, I get made fun of sometimes by my Christian friends, by the, because of my name, truth seeker, truth seeker, right? They, they, they make fun of me and say, oh, you still ain't found the truth yet. The truth is Jesus. Just search, seek Jesus. Yeah, it's the truth for a lot of things. But what about the rest of the truth? What about other things that God has put within us that we're interested in? You know what I'm saying? And God has lit this fire within you to focus on, to seek after. But other people have called evil or, or wicked. Again, we're going back to like, I can pretty much sum up the majority of this conversation with scriptures. I really can. I can show you in the in the Bible where the majority of what we've been talking about is in the scriptures. I don't need to, but for some people, they need that. But then for some people, they still won't get it. It ain't for them at, or for this time. You're not going to grasp a concept. You're not going to grasp a doctrine or a law until the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. I could tell you I'm blue in my face and try to I- explain this to you and what it means and what it means to me and what it means to the world and what it means to Christendom in the Bible. But if the Holy Spirit has not revealed it to you, 
You just ain't going to get it. I'm sorry. You have to go through experience. It's a form of gnosis, which is knowledge gained through experience. I can't just simply tell you what it is. Some things you just got to learn for yourself. Sometimes you just got to learn to quit judging folks. Why? Because people judge you and you know how that feels. You got to quit being mean to people. Why? Because people are being mean. You you have to go through this. And God has a beautiful way of uh, lining all that up for you. The author and finisher of our faith, of us going through this stuff and learning from our mistakes, learning from our past and our failures, and hopefully learning from the past and mistakes and failures of others, being able to look at their life and see what they're going through. And just maybe, maybe show a little grace. Just maybe, maybe show a little mercy. Because I really do believe that that is the message of Christ. Love the unlovable. Show grace to those who don't really seem to deserve it. Show grace to them, right? Because that's the only thing that we can do is show the same grace that has been shown to us. And be more tolerant. Quit acting like a know-it-all. Pride cometh before a fall. And once you're on that high horse... You're going to be knocked off by the blinding light of the Holy Spirit. Pride, that is a universal law. It's biblical. Pride cometh before a fall. And just as the Apostle Paul, who Jesus appeared to him as a bright light, literally knocked him off his high horse and said, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Like, why are you doing this? And you see yourself there and say, man, I've been attacking i've been running from i've been persecuting the very thing that i needed and there's reasons there's insecurities right we don't we want to feel secure in our faith we want to hope that the things that we're studying the things that we've not only given our life to but we've given our eternity to right if you've not only given your life to this but you've trusted your eternity to a pastor to a doctrine or whatever it is, you're going to fight tooth and nail for that to be right. Because you're not going to be mocked for this life. You're going to be mocked for eternity if you're wrong. And so there's this weird fear that to fight tooth and nail for the belief system. Sometimes you got to let that stuff go. There's a huge piece, man, that came upon me when I said, you know what? I don't know. And I gave up my right to be right. And I quit arguing with people. I quit being real combative over doctrines. You know, and things like that. It was a peace that surpassed all understanding when I was just in this place of rest. Rest. Look, this is my truth. This is what I've learned. If it can help you, good. If it can't, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I talk to these people on the podcast and I see what's working for them. You know, see what's working. See if we can apply it to our lives. Just something, man. Something at the end of the day. Being more graceful to people. And I say that. It's led me to two two notable people that I wanted to talk about, um, which just kind of falls under the same lines, uh, especially in Christendom. Recently this week, uh, Kanye West, this past Sunday, went and um, led worship or not really worship, led praise at a church in Atlanta. And he's got his big choir now. He's putting out a new album called Jesus is King, and it's all about the scriptures and, and the hope of that we have in Christ. He's pretty much doing a, a, a gospel album, and he's always sh- shared his faith in Christ, whether it was coming you know, from um, uh, the song Jesus Walks, which is a beautiful song, or I mean the song Reborn that he has with uh, um, um, Kid Cudi on Kid See Ghost, which is really one of my favorite songs, Reborn by Kid Cudi. Look that up. Um, and, and we see his, his love for Christ throughout his music. Obviously, he's manic and he's bipolar and going through things, but most geniuses are, right? And so there's a lot of scrutiny against him in church leading praise and stuff like that. And any anytime these, these celebrities do that, I mean, Justin Bieber is leading worship at a Hillsong church last week as well. Beautiful voice. Um, there's some beautiful music. You can look it up. There's a remix somebody made of Justin Bieber um singing reckless love if you look up the remix they took his vocals and just put it to a um a beat what song with this to, to like an edm beat and it's amazing justin bieber singing reckless love singing worship songs to christ it's beautiful um but people judge him you know what i'm saying they look at that and they see it and they judge it and they just can't have it 
You know, we're trying to be like the world. You got people stuck in their ways because they, they, cause their faith is just something that's delicate to them. They don't want to give it up, man. You t- you mean to tell me my faith is, is similar to what Kanye is doing or Kanye can live the way that he's living and still share my faith? You know, and so people get possessive, man. They get possessive about that stuff. Same thing with Justin Bieber. You know, anything that's just outside of what they believe. And I'm telling you what, God is so much bigger than anything that we can write down in a book, right? Whether it's the Bible. I mean, Jesus said, look, there's so much that I want to show you, but you guys aren't even ready to receive it. What if he would have wrote it down in the book? But then we could debate on it. Then we can maybe accept it as as doctrine. But like, there's so much that his the closest ones to him that they would probably believe anything he said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he said, look, there's some things that I can't even show y'all because <laughs> I'm going to scare you, right? And then when you find out, Jeremiah 33, 3, that the Lord has things that he wishes to show us that he hasn't shared with a soul. Nobody knows these things. But if you'll draw away in the secret place of prayer and meditation, sit in silence and get with God, that he's willing to whisper things to you about the mystery of eternity, the mystery of the gospel, the mystery of your anatomy. I mean, whatever your heart's desire is, is the whole thing is like not to seek it by other means, but go directly through God because you have access. See, that's what Christ gave you access to, that he torn the veil in between us and God. That was the law and the commandments. And these we had to sacrifice this and do that and prepare this and wash yourself seven times in the waters of Lake Minnetonka or whatever, like Jesus ripped that veil in between us and God. Now we have free access to him. Now we can go within and commune with the father because the kingdom of heaven is within you and nobody can take that from you. Nobody can put stipulations on that. No matter where you are, what part of the earth you're in, you can close your eyes and you can go in and you can commune with the father. And he points to love. He points to Jesus. God is love. Jesus is love incarnated into a man. It all starts to make sense, starts connecting the dots and starts seeing all of the stuff, phrasing, terminology. No, the term medium isn't in the Bible. You got a medium on your show, man. No, it's not in the Bible. Uh, Facebook ain't in the Bible. Cars ain't in the Bible. Like checking the count. That's not we got all of these things. You want them to be scripturally backed. Again, we can use the different words and terminologies and phrases people want to like reestablish the old covenant and all this kind of stuff. Hey, I used to be one of them. (laughs) You know, we are different people, man. You know what I'm saying? But the, the principles and the analogies and the allegories, that's forever. That will always apply no matter who you are to the Jew, to the Greek. It applies to everyone. If you apply the precepts, of what the scriptures is trying to say, of what God is trying to communicate through love, it'll work for everybody. God is not an, a uh, respecter of persons, right? So I wanted to speak about that and speak about Kanye West, but also um, Benny Hinn, which kind of made, made the news recently as well. So uh, Benny Hinn went viral Um, from this video he just put out renouncing the prosperity gospel. And so um, a lot of people have kind of like, as far as the heresy hunters are concerned, have like pointed fingers at Benny Hinn and, um, you know, called him a false prophet and false teacher and stuff like that. But honestly, I'm telling you, like Benny Hinn's got some really deep stuff. Like Benny Hinn knows some stuff, even stuff he's not. I believe that he's not sharing with the public. Like they'll, he, I've watched interviews where he'll elude to things and they'll try to ask him for more. But he'll just kind of back up. He'll kind of back up. Um, so like his his work has really been near and dear to my heart. Um, what's that book? It's a really good book. Um, good Morning, Holy Spirit which is a book that's really changed my life early on about intimacy with God and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, but he, again, he, he just went viral because he denounced the prosperity gospel, pretty much asked for forgiveness and said that he couldn't speak against it because everyone in his in his um, uh, circles, you know, were the prosperity people. And Benny Hens taught it for a while, but um, he's coming out of it. He said he don't want to be judged. He don't want to get to heaven and be turned away. He don't want to be chastised, you know what I'm saying, for fleecing the people. You know, so it was very interesting. So everybody's got something to say, right? Especially with something like that, kind of gets gets uh, get gets big. Um, I've watched other <laughs> notable um, ministers, uh, namely, um, what well, I can't think of her name right off. Oh my goodness! But there's other ministers who are now denouncing Benny Hinn because he denounced the prosperity gospel. And it's not that, that you're not supposed to be prosperous. You're supposed to prosper in, in, in everything that you do. And even as your soul prospers, right? It takes money to do this stuff. This doesn't exist without money. Some of these levels, these people are doing their ministry to and television and stuff like that doesn't happen without money. Uh, but there's definitely a right way and a wrong way. And Benny Hens kind of confessed that, look, we've done this kind of wrong. We've let this thing consume us. And so, yeah, props and shout out to Benny Hen for kind of seeing whether it was the er the error of his ways or coming to a new revelation of knowledge of what he was teaching. Like it could be one scripture or one download from the Holy Spirit that really changes his paradigm. And he, he said, that, look, the things I what I believed about the Bible and the way I, I read the Bible today. Is not how I read the Bible 20 years ago. How many people can uh, can attest to that? Maybe not 20 years ago, maybe maybe a week ago. Like we're ever learning and, and things are changing. And some things that we read over in the Bible, we have no idea what it means. We read it and we just keep reading. Then you may watch a movie. You may read another book that kind of reiterates it. And then the next time you read that scripture, boom, you, you and it all makes sense. It all fits together cohesively. I mean, I remember the whole tithing thing, tithes and offerings. And if you don't tithe, then God was going to take his money and you owe God tithe and you owe him that tenth. And if you don't give that tenth, God will take it. He'll find a way to take it. He'll he'll your, your car will break down. Amen. You're so like I remember this this fear doctrine that came about that we were taught in church that if we weren't able to give 10 percent of every paycheck, to the church, then God would find a way to take it from you because you owed it to him. Like that was crazy. That was like this fear thing that we were under and we believed it. We lived our lives accordingly. We made sure we gave that 10%. And if we didn't have it, we would take notes and say, look, we owe God, you know, $30 next week. So we had to add $30 on to what we already owed. And we started racking up a debt and he looked at God like this angry mobster, like, man, you better you better have my money. You ain't. And that's how these pre pre preachers be. You ain't got my money. <laughs> and we believed it. But the Bible don't it's not speaking about that. Those prophecies aren't to you. It could be one scripture that you read that makes everything make make sense. That was a, a, a scripture that's quoted of in the book of Malachi, chapter four. But little did we know and the preachers quote that all the time. God said, test me in this area. If you test me in this one area, then God I will rebuke the devourer over your life. And blah, 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 blah. And all of these things we hear in these, these offerings and things. And uh, I didn't think to read, to go back and read the beginning of the chapter. This is like an obscure verse at the end of uh, four chapters. It's just a one little place. And then I go back to, let's say, let me get a, great, a greater understanding and reading the scriptures. And I go back and read Malachi 1, 2, 3, and then 4. And then I find out at the beginning of each of these chapters, this is a prophecy against the, the Levite priest. This, these books are addressed to somebody. Like this is a prophecy and a warning addressed to someone. But the pastors will read it and say that it's talking about you. Like this is for you. It's like, what? It's for me. You're reading a prophecy against someone else and putting it on me. That's a curse. You just put a curse on me. That's witchcraft. That's manipulation. To turn the scripture and make it say something that it don't say. For you to gain off of it. I can say if you, you're just ill-informed. But now you're gaining. And some people know it. 
Like they know that it says that, but they continue to do it because that's one of the greatest ways to get money. They won't, the people won't give just because they're moved with compassion. You got to make them give. You got to shake them. You got to shake that money out of them. We've been to some weird churches, man. And I've seen some weird tactics on how to get money people. And they're really good at it. Like they're really good at it, whether it's selling a blessing or, you know, Benny Hinn's been a part of that. That's why he's drawn back. Like if you give $58 for 58 months, you'll receive the blessing of Isaiah 58. Like, hold on. Wait, what? Y'all just made this up. And you preach it and you got a suit on and you're very eloquently spoken and you got money and we want money. You know, we want to have our bills taken care of. So we got to listen to the wisdom of the man of God. You find out that these people look. It's crazy. We I had some friends over. We've been talking about the the uh, documentary that came out uh, called Marjo. Marjo Gortner. And he was a child minister. He was four years old and he was doing wedding services, marrying people at four years old. His parents raised him up. And this little boy, he grew up in it and they, he was a novelty act. And so they would travel and everyone would want to come out to tent revivals and see Marjo, the minister. He's just a baby preaching the word of God. And um, and, and people would give and um, he, there was tactics and things that his parents taught him. There were call signals as his parents were on stage and he was doing his thing. His parents would say, praise God. And that meant you have the people where you where you want them. Uh, take an offering if they say, amen, brother. That means you're getting off a little bit. You need to pull it back in. And they would have these different call signals and stuff that they would tell the little boy. And he learned this stuff as a kid and he grew up in it. And uh, and as he became older, he departed from the faith. He was just honest and said, look, I don't believe. Like, I don't believe in this stuff. You guys were made me a slave. Like, I, I'm earning y'all's paychecks. And he just didn't believe. So he got out of that and he got into the hippie movement back in the 70s. And he started doing his own thing. But then again, he had to go out and get a job. So after you've been preaching and doing all of this stuff your whole life, he don't know how to dig ditches. He don't know how to frame houses and and work, you know, with his hands. So the only thing he knew how to do was to put on a show and be a be a preacher, a traveling evangelist. So he, he did that again as someone who didn't believe, but he was just really good at it. He was really good at it. So he goes out there and he uh, he's preaching. But then he gets convicted, like there's something going on in his heart. He's like, you know what? This ain't right. I don't believe this stuff. But so he hot, he, he wanted to be an actor. So he um, um, hired a film crew to follow him. And he did one last uh, tour where he went to all these different churches and stuff and and um, essentially performed. He was a great performer. Um, got a film, film crew to come with them. And he's on camera. He's sh showing you everything that he does and showing you how to collect the money. He's showing you how to um, uh, how he s would sleep with different women and diff from different cities. And he would never mess with any of the girls at the at the uh, revivals. He would also always try to get a woman on the plane. And he would give you all these tactics and showing you how we did it. And then that night it would show him preaching and getting the, the crowd riled up and people catching the Holy Spirit and falling out and stuff like that. And so he showed you what, what that looked like. But he exposed himself. He said, look, this I'm just doing this for you guys. I'm showing y'all, and after this, I'm done. And he showed you what it was looked like. And uh, so there was kudos to that person, you know. And there's a lot of people who, who are very similar. There's different tactics and things that they do to get money and to shake people. I remember going to one church. They wouldn't let you out unless you put something in the plate. Like they stood by the door and you couldn't get out the church. We were visitors and we had to put something in there. Even if, I mean, the, the kids would only have quarters, like give them three quarters and they'd put in there, you know, but the person would watch what you put in there. Um, but it was just like their tradition was give us an offering to leave the building. And I wa tried to walk out the door and the lady stood in front of me and held her hand out with the, with the offering. And I grabbed the hand and I shook it and just walked right up. <laughs> I said, well, I ain't got no money. I'm a guest, you know, but they expected us to give. I mean, so many different things as far as like, you know, there's a, there's 10 people. The Lord spoke to my heart and there's 10 people here who are supposed to give $100 each. 
and we are not to move until those 10 people come forth. And they'll sit there and they'll wait and people are looking around and it gets really awkward. And the scripture says, upon your giving, you should not be moved by compulsion. They shouldn't be tricked into giving. You should be given out of out of out of the you know the abundance of your heart. Given because you've been moved by the message. Given because you believe in something, right? Not given because you're given to get. Now, one church I was given to get out. <laughs> you couldn't get out. We've seen some really interesting things, man. And so, again, uh, just that that whole tangent is like understanding the scriptures and understanding that. Study to show yourself approved, man. The scriptures are here to, li- to liberate you, to set you free, to give you a new life and life more abundantly, not to put you in the bondage as again unto fear, as many are. Man, this is the gospel of liberty. This is the gospel of grace, of freedom. And uh, that's, 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 I'm not in it for the income. I'm in it for the outcome. And that's what we're supposed to be, man, that, man, if we if we believe God and trust him at his word, man, um, he's faithful and, and, and just to, to finish the work in which he started. It's one of I, I believe the Bible is the most powerful book on the planet. And if we will if we will adhere to the, the teaching and, the, and, and the, the meanings behind those stories and, and how they overcame their enemies and how they showed love when they at the time, it was probably proper for them to show to show wrath. You know what I'm saying? But they showed love. And so they passed that test and get to go to those deeper levels in Christ, man. It's good. Like this is a powerful. The word is sharper than any two edged sword able to to decipher between soul and spirit. As one is, is reading the scriptures, you're essentially looking in, into a mirror, reading the, the secrets and the desires of your heart. And God knows it. And it's beautiful. So if you read it with, with that in mind as you're reading it, you can f- search out the depths of God and he'll show you who you are. He'll speak to your heart and show you what you're called to do. Other people read it because they're ready to combat it. See, the Bible is sharper than any two-edged sword. They use it for sword play and stabbing other Christians, right? They fight other people with the scriptures. We've been guilty of it, man. I've done it. That's why I'm speaking on it. If I haven't spoke on it, if I haven't done it, I wouldn't speak on it, right? There's wisdom to learn, you know? So with that being said, man, oh uh, man, I, I enjoyed this conversation. Um, and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Looking forward to, uh, to having more. We got some really cool guests lined up. Um, some, I'm talking to some, some really interesting people here within the next couple of weeks. And so lining up some more stuff as well. So if anybody wants to come on the show, you want to do an interview, Hang out with your boy. Let me know. Send me an email. Let me know what you want to talk about. We'll see about making it happen. Again, thank you to everybody who came out to the Christ Consciousness Conference, man. We really had a good time. Um, any excuse for me to get into the presence of God and talk about God, like, I'm down. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, it, it was a beautiful encounter, and, and everybody who, who came out um, uh, was ministered to. And so it was really good stuff. And so looking forward to the next one. So you want to check it out. I'm going to have the, the videos and stuff like that uploaded as well as soon as I get it back from the the, uh, the guy who uh, came out and, and did that. So that stuff will be up and hopefully you'll be able to hear the message and stuff that I shared. I really feel like it's a lot of stuff that I share on here all the time, but it was really put together in a message. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys will get to see that soon. Um, with all that said, I'm going to say peace and shalom, man. Thank you guys again for the support. Everybody who believes in the work that God has entrusted me to and uh, what I'm bringing to the table um everybody supporting at patreon if you want to support go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker there to uh to get access to some of the really cool features that we have on there as well um again man like i'm almost done with this book almost done i'm um fin- i think i finished writing this morning i'll probably have to go over it one more time and just come maybe fill in some some holes and stuff like that uh any anything else that comes to me to do that Add some pictures, get it formatted. It's a long process, man. Super long process, man. It's so funny because I've helped people get their books ready. And then I've put out a book in the past, but nothing has been so so time consuming um, and uh, and just draining even just like pulling a part of me out and just putting it in there. You know what I'm saying? And trying to figure out which parts to put in there and which parts to keep to myself because you're not able to understand them yet. Like, there's some stuff in there that's probably going to get me in trouble, but 
it, hey, it is what it is. Like, why? I don't know why I should hold back. You know, I've never been the one to, uh, I'm not known for holding back. You know what I'm saying? Just getting it out there. The truth is the truth. And so I'm getting it out there, guys. It's almost done. The, the cover is amazing. Just got the artwork back. This book is called Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God. What's up, Greek? Shout out to you, brethren. And everybody else who's watching us live, if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are, uh, shout out to you guys for holding us down live. You guys are awesome. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. We're going to do it again. Peace. Peace. Later. Your will is so much higher than mine. So much higher than mine. Your so much deeper than mine. So much deeper than mine. Oh. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.